All right, y'all, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about Ether. So where to start? How about what the heck is Ether? Great question. So Ethereum's unit of currency is called, you guessed it, Ether. And you need Ether to do pretty much anything on the network, aside from some very basic things, like you can read data from the network for free, but let's just say that you need Ether to do anything interesting on the Ethereum network. So let's go ahead and start with the most simple use case, and that is whenever one user has some Ether and they just want to transfer it to another user. So say that this user just got done watching the new Boston tutorial on Ethereum, and they thought it was pretty cool, decided to buy, let's see, one, two, three, four Ether right here. So they told their friend about it and their friend thought it was pretty cool too. So this person decided to transfer two Ether to someone else's account. Maybe their friend, their moms, their brother, sister, whoever. So what they can do is issue a command to the Ethereum network and say, hey, I wanna take two of my Ether and send them to someone else, another account. So the Ethereum network can do that and after this, it would update their balance from four to two, and it would update the recipients from, let's say they had zero before, so zero to two. All right, so in this way, it's, it's basically just acting as a transfer of money, or in other words, you can view Ether as a standard unit of currency. Now, I do wanna mention that even in these simple transfers of Ether, it is going to require the user to pay a fee in Ether, and that is because even though it's uh, you know pretty simple math, just saying you know deduct some ether from this account and add it to this account, what this user is essentially doing is instructing the Ethereum network to do some amount of work. And all of these computers, all of these node maintainers, they just don't want to you know spin up their servers and do everything for free. So the Ethereum network does require a small fee, even for these simple transactions. Now, another thing that I want to mention real quick is that you'll often hear people saying things like, hey, send me five Ethereum or, hey, I'm going to send you three Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is technically the name of the network. So this isn't correct terminology, although, you know, I'm guilty of uh, using <laughs> incorrect terminology a lot. However, in this case, I do want to point out that what they actually mean is, hey, send me five Ether or I'm going to send you five Ether. So Ethereum is the name of the overall network and Ether is the unit of currency used by Ethereum. Now, aside from just simple transactions of Ether from one person to another, Ether is also needed for dApps. Developers, they need Ether to actually create these smart contracts and pretty much issue them or deploy them to the network. And another thing is that Ether is also needed to execute these smart contracts or run them whenever they are on the network. And I know we didn't cover that process of deploying or executing smart contracts yet, but just keep in mind for now that Ether is needed for dApps. Now, another interesting note is that Ether can be further divided into smaller units called Way. Now, one Ether is actually equal to one quintillion Way. So this diagram is not exactly accurate for purposes of not wanting my computer to explode. I decided it was best to not render one quintillion, <laughs> one quintillion way on here. But just remember that one ether is equal to one quintillion way and that is 10 to the 18th. And way is indeed the most base or in other words, the most atomic unit of ether. So you can't split up away. Now, if you are interested in developing smart contracts, you're actually gonna be working with Way quite a bit. And just to make it easier in everyone's head, there are a lot of tools out there to convert Way to Ether. So say that you wanted to, I don't know, maybe make a smart contract that was distributing like uh, two Ether to someone. Now, if you wanted to convert that to way, instead of you know having a piece of paper or calculator, there are actually a lot of different converters online. If you just type in ether to way converter, there's gonna be a, a ton that pop up. But let's say uh, you type in two ether right here, then it's gonna do all the conversions and you can see that this is two quintillion way. Now, there are also a lot of different units in between there, but the most common ones are just ether and way. 
To be honest, no one really uses these other units that often. GUI is one that's I see sometimes used, but really, if you just know way in Ether, then you're gonna be fine. Now, the last thing that I wanna touch on in this video is how is Ether created? Or in other words, where does it come from? So whenever new Ether is created, it's distributed to the nodes in exchange for their help in participating and securing the network. However, when new Ether is created, it is not just split up and distributed evenly to all nodes. The new Ether is distributed to one node at a time through a process called mining. And I'm sure you heard of this before, but we are gonna review mining in more detail in the upcoming course. For right now, I just wanna give you a very high level overview to really just focus on the core concept of Ether and mention that that is how it gets created or minted into the network. So for now, I think that covers everything that we need to discuss about Ether for the time being. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later.